Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Angelica's Journal. Um, today, we're going to be talking about starting to plan for the garden. Um, it is February 7th today, Wednesday. Um, I'm about two weeks behind, but I have found some paperwork where a few years ago, um, I had started actually at the end of February and in the middle of March. So, you know, like it's not really that late, but I like to get it done in January. But anyway, so this is everything um, that I use. This is my box of seeds. Whoops, it's backwards. So that's where I store all my seed packages uh, my dividers are marked by how many weeks before the last frost. So BLF I use a lot. It represents before last frost. So it's six to eight weeks before the last frost. Now I also have house plants here. Then it's 10 weeks or more because there's usually not much in there. Um, and I do put it behind the divider. I used to put it in front. Um, and then I got confused because before that I had done it in the back, but I thought I'd do it in the front, but it just confused me. So now I'm back to putting it behind the tag. And then um, here it's zero to two weeks before last frost. As you can see, there's nothing because at that point, if it only needs two weeks before the last frost, then really do you need to do it beforehand or can you just direct sow it right unless it's a hot weather plant like it, it can't take the cold then you might put it behind there like put it in here um do it the two weeks but if it's a cool weather plant you really don't need to right and then i do have two sections one is direct sow <coughs> excuse me direct sow in the garden but it's a cool weather so anything like lettuce or spinach that when the weather warms up it's going to start bolting those you want to put in early um i have tried things like putting it in the shade um or things like that but still when the heat gets too high like 25 degrees they're not going to grow well, a lot of them won't. Um, and then I also have direct sow warm weather. And it looks like I don't have, you know what? This might be all mixed up too because I was using it for doing my order. I was pulling them out. So I'm going to have to go through when I get my order. Um, I'm going to be going through it again. And then at that point, um, I will check because I know I have some warm weather on the back of the divide. I'll use this one as an example. I do mark what should be in that section so that when I'm doing my order, I can look at this or not do the order, but make a list of what I need. Um, I will go through this list and check what's in here and then if there's something on this list that I don't have in here then I will write it down on a piece of paper um, so zero to two weeks of course there's nothing on that card um, six to eight is my busiest so there you go like there's a lot there and it's everything from flowers to vegetables to herbs like everything's on there that I like to do if there's anything I don't like like I don't do sweet pea anymore which sweet pea is the flowering one that can be crossed off because I'm not doing it anymore anyways and then my last section is mixed packages so you can buy uh, a mixed package of seeds that is called wildflowers another one flower garden um, and there are other names too. Those are the two that I had. Um, I didn't put it on the back. Those two names should have been in the back. And then just mark mixed. Um, so yeah, there are some packages that are mixed uh, flower seeds. 
and um, yeah so I have a section on that and then in this box here I have a box in here which is the way the seeds came one year because if you order a lot they have little boxes for it now this one is my tubers now I completely forgot I bought this I don't even know if it's still viable or not but this was my non-stop begonia apricot flavor begonia to me is considered a house plant yes you can put them out in the garden but since I'm going to be ending up bringing it in in the fall I just rather do it indoors and have it indoors and keep it indoors begonias are beautiful I love the leaves on it um, but I forgot about this so I'm gonna try planting them they might not be viable I don't know we'll have to wait and see okay sorry I, I thought I was gonna sneeze my nose is itchy anyways so that is my box of seeds and then when I get my order I will go through it and put all the seeds where they belong make sure everything's in order and um, then I will take this and update my binder now I'll show you that in a minute now these are two books that I swear by this one I had the hardcover one before we had our house fire I love this book when we lived in our, our family house um, before I sold it this is the book that I had and I swear by it why is that in there oh maybe because of all the see this is the kind of thing if you have a wildflower package it could end up even messier than this like the colors would be all like messed up and that is really nice when you have a large area and you're planting right in the gar ground but if you remember I'm a container gardener yes I do have a perennial bed that I plant in the ground but most of my growing is in containers so anyways these have all kinds and it gives you like geraniums I love geraniums and it shows you all the different colors and the different types, petunias, marigolds, like these are all annuals. See, it's labeled annuals. And then they have a section on bulbs and they should have a perennial. Oh, there's the perennial section. So perennials are uh, plants that come back every single year. You plant them once. And they're good for, I don't know, 10 years or something. Whereas annuals only last until the frost hits it. Once the frost hits the plant, they're done. But a lot of them, you can take a leaf cutting and propagate it and make new plants for the following year. So when you're advanced enough with gardening, you can take your plants that are dying take the leaves or the roots and you can or mostly i think it's through the leaves um, and then you can propagate new plants or you buy seeds like with marigolds and petunias i'll buy the seeds and then you know like one year i might have pink another year i might have all mixed colors you know it's nice to add a little bit different um variation to it and uh yeah so i love this book and then this is one I got later on, like, you know, more recent, like maybe six, seven years ago. And it's pretty much the same. See, runner beans, green beans, peas, garlic, leek, onion. Like it, they have a, 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 a one page or two page spread of all these. And it tells you all about how to grow it, what the, the plant likes what it doesn't like their charts as to when to start them um so i love these two books if i need information i reach for one of these two i do have other books i have magazines with decorating ideas um, um even after harvesting um if you do enough plants um i do have a canning book um, 
you know, stuff like that. But I don't grow enough to warrant canning. We just eat them right away. Like my peas never leave the garden. My boyfriend's out there eating them as they mature. My granddaughter too. And they love the raspberries and stuff. So there's a lot of things that never even make it in the house. And then there are other things that do. But my grandson loves squa uh, zucchini. The yellow one. So all my yellow zucchini or a lot of it goes to my grandson. So anyways, this is my binder. It's I think a three inch binder, two inch binder, probably a three inch binder. Let's find out. Yep, it's a three inch binder. Now I do want to downsize to maybe a two inch, but for now it works. Now when you open it up, it does have a side pocket here. And these are just things I printed, like starting seeds indoors. Really, I don't need that. But I want to read through it and add things into my pages that I might not think of. Uh, there are two. This is another one with just, oh, little tip tips. Provide shade, watering, mulch. It's just, you know, add to what I already know. Um, harvesting herbs, it's all about that. Um, this one is the four o'clocks. I did not realize I had four o'clocks. I thought they were weeds, but I have four o'clocks. Um, how do you wood, wood ash? So when you're burning wood, whether you have a fireplace indoors, whether you go camping and have a fireplace, whether you burn wood in the backyard, whatever, any wood ash, it tells you how to use it in your soil. Uh, growing herbs again. Oh, so the herbs should be together. Well, that's the four o'clock. There's harvesting herbs. Let's put herbs in there. Uh, bring outdoor plants indoors, which that probably I don't need. But I printed it because it was interesting. You know, expand my knowledge. Uh, how to prevent frost damage. Origins of Halloween. I was curious about that one year. I, it doesn't go with gardening, but anyways, so just things that are online that I don't have time at that time to read through it and take notes. I'll just print it up and do it at a later date. These have been sitting in here for probably a year, if not more. Um, and then in here is just, you know, uh, uh, things I've, I've written up my, my calendar, for gardening, um, scribbly notes. There's from West Coast Seeds, which is out of BC. Um, and then notes that I write, powder, powder mildew, that goes in a section in my binder. Cabbage moths, how to um, confuse them so they don't go onto your, your um, cabbage moths would be like for broccoli and cabbage and kale and that kind of thing. If you plant these these herbs or onion and garlic or flour, it'll confuse the cabbage moth and then you're less likely to get them. It's not 100%, but less likely. And then this is a foliar spray. Um, flowers that make nice bouquets. I have the lilac. I have the baby's breath. Um, lavender is really hard for me to grow for some reason, but I do have it on and off. I got to master that. And then I just need a peony and roses. And then I can do, um, you know, like old, like, I guess it's like an old English garden. Um, it's, those are for a nice bouquet, um, um, seed starting medium. And then this is to enrich my soil. Here was last year's. Um, seed starting schedule, you know, just notes, turmeric tea, garden pest control. Um, oh yeah, what to grow with what. Certain things that you grow with other things. Oh yeah, I want to know gluten-free grains, thinking maybe I can grow some of them. Um, shade flowers for the deck. Yeah, so certain ones, there's my ant killer. Um certain ones if you grow with another um like certain flowers or herbs that you grow with specific vegetables or fruit um 
they help get rid of the insects. Um, so they're like, I guess you could say the way I look at the garden is organic gardening, because if I don't have to use chemicals, I don't want to, but I will try a method to get rid of a certain insect that's bad for the garden. And if it doesn't work, then I'll try a different method. And um, sometimes it's within the same year. Sometimes it's the following year I try it. Um, like I, I went, I had a couple of years, I had birds in my garden and I was feeding the birds. But then after um, I decided, let's see what it's like without, because bird seed is really expensive. I, I get a lot of birds, you know, sometimes I could have like easily 20 or 30 birds. So, um, I tried one year not feeding the birds, which then the birds don't come to the garden. That year, my hollyhocks were infested with aphids. And I had had hollyhocks for a couple of years at that point. That I think that was my third year. And, oh my God. And so then last year, I started taking care of the birds again, and I did not have any aphids. So birds definitely help. You might not see it. You might not notice it, but they definitely um, help with your garden. So birds are definitely one of those an uh, animals um, that is beneficial to your garden. Um, so now we'll go in the, in the, in the binder. So my first section is seed inventory. So I took my box of seeds and I wrote down, I actually wrote down everything in sections of flowers, perennial, annual, biennial, which there was none because whatever I have, I don't need. So there was nothing biennial, um, herbs, vegetable, fruit, and indoor plants. So as I came across the seeds, I'd put them where they belong. And I went through all my seeds. So the ones with a check mark means I opened the package and there was a lot of seeds inside the package. So I put a check mark. I don't need that one. Um, and the reason why I did it this way, I included everything that was in the seed box is because when I go through the order, sometimes, you know, I'll see something that I'm like, oh, I want this flower, but I don't remember. Do I have it? Maybe I already have it. So this way I know what I have, what's low. If it has a question mark, then that means there was either no seeds or only a very few seeds in the package, which means I then have to order it again. But then this way I know what I need to order so let's say the geranium, this year I don't want the geranium. I want to replace it with something else. So then I see the seeds are low. All right, so something new, let's say I put here, um, I don't know, violas. Um, so then I can put viola here because it's an annual, I believe. Um, and then um, I just won't order this. I'll order this new one instead. So this gives me a visual of what I have, you know, like I have a whole bunch of mammoth Russian sunflower. I have peridovic sunflower, and then I have this sunflower, and they all have check marks, which means there's plenty of seeds in there. So I'm not going to choose a different sunflower because I have more than enough here. And so that's why I take an inventory of everything I have, what's low, so that when I next step, I mean, uh, in a couple of steps, so when I go to order, I know what I need to order. So that is my first section. Take your inventory of your seeds. Then number two, I plan my garden. Now this is the bird sanctuary with the big tree. I think it's a spruce. This is my upper deck and my lower deck and the garage. There's a pathway here. And uh, so um, my steps, I usually do herbs 
or I do lettuce and spinach. This coming year, I'm going to do lettuce and spinach. Because there is a wooden gate here, it gives a bit of shade. And then when the weather gets really hot, I can put up a couple of plant plant pots here, which will shade these guys out. So if the lettuce and spinach, um, you know, it's less likely for them to bolt. Plus, it's very open here. So if there's any wind, either from the north or from the east, because that's north, that's east, that's south, and west is this side. So if there's any wind from the north or the east, it will cool down the air a little bit. Um, here there's an opening under the deck, so we can't put anything here. This is my sink. There is a tree, um, with a bench under it. And then here is my horseshoe with the island in the middle. These are my perennials along the back fence. This is the pathway. So I drew out everything. Um, these are actually round tubs, but I made them square. Oh, well, there's two, four, six, eight. 10 because there's the beans are also round half barrels um but that's okay whatever and so i i planted i i drew out where everything is like the shed is actually closer and there's not that big of a corner but it's good enough for me to visually see where i can put what so peppers and tomato and zucchini tomato and zucchini have been in those locations for probably four years now, three, four years, and they're fine there. I don't have insect problems, nothing. I could switch the totes so that um, zucchini will be in the tomatoes totes and the tomatoes will be in the zucchini totes because the soil could be depleted, but that's more for when you plant in ground. I'm planting in containers. So every single container gets enriched every spring. So I don't have to worry about tomatoes over depleting the calcium in the soil or zucchini over depleting, you know, I don't know, nitrogen in the soil. Because every year I add compost, I add um, rock dust and all these other things that enrich the soil. And then the vitamins I give on a bi-weekly or monthly basis will it then enhance it even more so when you plant in containers you don't have to worry about those things so anyways i did a plan see I, for flowers i just wrote flowers because that i'll figure out at the end but like my my this is my fruit garden this is my vegetable garden that's my perennials this is my sink where i work from this is my wood storage and that shed my boyfriend uses. So everything is, oh yeah, my bird sanctuary. Um, so everything, I can see everything. I know like a lot of my perennials or herbs are permanent year after year. Some are not. Um, yeah, so this is how I plan out my garden. Now I could change things on the last minute but right now, this is the way my garden looks. Then from those two section of information, this is the list that I made. So everything that I needed to order, I put on this list. And then I added some things to it. This is uh, in the spring I'll be buying. So I need to now make a list, like add to this, what I need to buy in the spring. Um, sheep manure and hen poop, those two um, will probably, well, sheep manure I'll buy first. But then once the soil's been enriched with the sheep manure, that's when I'll go and buy the hen poop. Because then I just top it up, maybe once every three, four weeks with hen, hen poop. I just put a few, they come in balls and I just put a few down. And then when you water it, the nutrients go in the soil. But I start off with the sheep manure. Um, what's missing on this is perlite, rock dust. Like there's a few things missing, but that wasn't my priority. The seeds are my priority. So I did that. I highlighted green is Mackenzie seeds. 
The blue is TNT. Oh, I highlighted it here. See TNT? It's in blue. Mackenzie's in green. West Coast Seeds is in um, orange. If I would have ordered from Perron, which is another one I occasionally order from, that would have been in a different color. So then now I know the green ones are the ones I ordered from Mackenzie, which they'll come with maybe a week or two. The ones from TNT, I don't think they mail out until early March or end of, of February. So I might not get those for a while. And then West Coast Seeds, well, I actually ordered more than those two. But anyways, so I highlighted so I know I've already ordered it. So if I go into TNT and the Portolaca um, is not the variety I want, I can go into West because I've already gone through Mackenzie and they didn't have it. I ordered the majority from Mackenzie. I buy everything from there, but whatever they don't have, I will then go to TNT and order it through them. Um, they didn't, uh, Mackenzie does not have stevia, borage, cucamelon, um, geraniums, ground cherry. Oh, they do have a ground cherry, but it's a different variety. I decided to get two varieties. Anyway, so then I go to the next one. Like I order them in order, always in the same order. One, two, three three, four. So I crossed this one off. I, I thought I wouldn't use them. I thought I could get it just from the two, but neither one of them had the Johnny jump up. So I had to get it from there and I love those things. So I wasn't going to omit it just because like next year, I probably won't have to order from them because I'll have a pack and it'll last, you know, like two or three years. But, um, yeah. So anyways, there you go. That was my order. This is the one I'll have to uh, prepare for spring. So from this, like I said, those are the companies I ordered from. I print out a copy of what I ordered from each one of them. And then um, when they arrive, I will go through my checklist to make sure I got everything I paid for. I'm sorry, everybody, but I... Have to uh, stop the video at this point there was a, an error on my part and so I'm redoing the second part of this video um, we left off where um, I was telling you about um, I print out my a copy for me of the um, in uh, order that I placed um, so that when the order arrives, there's three orders. I have my copy to confirm that I got everything I ordered. <clears throat> That's where we left off. And so now we're going to go to the next section. So once I receive those seeds, I then update this list. Like this is the one from last year. It's still on the computer. So I just have to go into it, eliminate the ones that don't apply this year. And then anything new I got, um, I would have to add to the list so that I know at 10 plus weeks, I'm starting this eight to 10, I'm starting this and so on and so forth. And then I have some columns here, which I might be tweaking a bit. Um, last year was my first year of doing this. So um, the notes, I think, could be smaller, and then these will be changed a bit. Um, I used to do it handwritten, and um, this was my list of everything I was starting um, with uh, seeds. Um, and so then I did decided to do it on the computer because it's a lot easier to just eliminate things and then add in things. On um, Everything's easier on the computer. Another thing um, I forgot to mention on the previous video, I mean like the first part of this video, that these companies I'm telling you about, Mackenzie Seeds, TNT Seeds, um, West Coast Seeds, and Perron, um, I am not sponsored by any of them. Um, I've just tried a few companies and those are the ones I'm happy with. Mackenzie is also in stores, so 
Um, they don't charge for shipping, so that's why I order online. And then if I miss something, I can always buy it in store. Um, the TNT, the West Coast um, Seeds and Perron, they all charge for shipping. TNT is the least expensive. West Coast um, Seeds are um, more expensive. And then Perron is even more expensive. So th that's why I choose to go in those order. Um, I don't know any other company that... I did try one or two other ones, but I did not like them for some reason. And or it could be their shipping was too high. I'm not sure. But through, you know, evaluation of the whole situation, those are the ones I came up with that I'm good with. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, I'm not sponsored by any of them. They're just companies that I've chosen over the years to go with. Okay, so then I update my list. So I know what's what. And then last year I created this uh, worksheet. Um, it gives you plant, you write in what type it, what plant it is, um, you know, tomatoes, and then the variety, what variety, a tiny Tim or whatever. And then if they're annual, biennial, perennial, if they like full sun, um, sun or part sun. Um, actually it should be full sun or part sun. Oh no, there's sun in between too. Okay. Um, so then I would mark that there, the height, the maximum height they grow, if they, what kind of, uh, moisture they like, the soil, the good companions and the bad companions, and then other notes. Um, start indoors, outdoors, cool and warm. So I, I mark, um, over here, um, if I start them indoors or not. Um, if not, then is it cool weather or warm weather type of plant? And then the companions, good and bad, because some um, herbs and flowers enhance the fruits and vegetables. Um, some fruits and vegetables don't like to be near each other. Um, I used to buy a hanging basket of cherry tomatoes and a hanging basket of strawberry tomatoes when we were in the condo. Um, cause we were on in an upper condo with, with a balcony. And so I would hang these over the, the edge. I had a bracket. It was a wooden railing. So I attached the bracket and then I hung it from there. And there was one year, my, I think it was the strawberries did not do well. And I had Googled it and found out you cannot plant tomatoes too close to strawberries because the strawberries won't produce as much. Um, so some things like that you would mark here. You, the things that will help it and things that will, uh, n you know, m make it so that you don't have enough produce. Um, some are good and bad companions are based on soil. Now, if you're planting in containers, that would not affect it. Um, but if you're planting in containers, but it's an environment thing or... Um, you know, brassicas will attract the cabbage fly. So if you plant certain herbs or flowers around it, the scent will deter them. That you would mark. If it's soil related, you don't really need to mark if you're planting in containers. Anyway, so I made myself this for every plant that I grow. Um, it just helps me like if it was hollyhocks, um, I could mark they're prone to aphids. And then maybe over here, mark, um, you know, you would mark the things that would deter the aphids. And, and here, maybe a remedy to get rid of the aphids, should it happen. Um, so that's what these plant information sheets are. And then after that, we got, whoops, oh, these two are blanks. Okay, soil. Anything that has to do with soil. Um, how to enrich the soil. Um, tomatoes like, um, they have blossom end rot and I believe it's a calcium thing or something. Um, I would mark that under this because it has to do with the soil. It's not getting enough nutrients. Um, anything soil related would go in this section. Anything insect related would go in this section, including my, um, borax and sugar for the ants, um, how to get rid of aphids, 
um, also positive insects like um, predatory uh, insects, butterflies and um, bees and whatever they like. I would put under here because they're an insect. I would put, um, you know, so-and-so plants uh, attract but, uh, butterflies and these these plants attract bees and, and um, you know, things like that. So that would be everything insect related. Then I have a monthly calendar, which I don't really use anymore. Um, I may change that one. I don't know. That's debatable. And then my catalogs. I have a section of all my catalogs, old and new. And the reason why I keep them is if you if I open it up, um, 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 um I don't know. Okay, let's just go with, um, let's say zucchini. Where's zucchini? Uh, squashes, pumpkins. Um, here, okay, we'll just do with this one. It has a thicker, longer neck, butternut, bright orange, sweet, excellent winter storage. So you know you can store this for the winter. Um, let's pick something else. Tomato, outstanding, sweet and juicy, cherry tomato, reddish pink, will produce all season long. So that's a very pro prolific one. Uh, this one, staking type, so you need to stake that one. Um, sometimes they will tell you about um, the environment, something about their environment or... Um, like if you go into herbs, where are the herbs? They have a, a table of contents. Flowers, supplies, bulbs, perennial, hedges, fruits. Mm, they don't have one on herbs. Oh, there, herbs, page 20. All right, so let's say lemon balm repels mosquitoes. Uh, this one's borage. Bee bomb attracts bees. Those are the things you want to write down on those information sheets. Slow to bolt, cilantro. This variety won't bolt as quickly. Um, does sage say anything? Um, peppermint repels spiders and mice. Um, this one shows a butterfly. So I'm going to assume it's good for butterflies. Sage, relaxing aroma, good in meat and poultry. Um, it doesn't say anything there. Um, so basically, that's what you're looking for. Any added information that you can put on your information sheet so that you know that, you know, it, it's it's good for something else. Um, this one, mammoth basil, this one, it says basil on a sunny windowsill. It loves filtered light. So that means it does not like direct sunlight. It likes filtered light. Um, uh, this lettuce is a red lettuce. It says nice in a flower bed, which I agree. Um, but that's not really information you wouldn't know. Um, here is one that's heat resistant, uh, Simpson Elite. So just things like that. And that's why I keep the older ones because um, I will go through it. And then once I've read through it, took any information I want from it, I'll put an X through it. And then I'll go to the next one and I'll read that one. And if there's something to add to my information sheet, I will. Then when I'm done with it, exit out. Next one. And I'll go through the whole book like that. But it it takes like a whole year to go through one book. Like I don't just sit down and just do that. Whenever I have some spare time, I'm watching a video or a movie or something. I'll take my TV table in the living room and I'll do it. Or I'll do it here at my desk. Um, yeah, so that's why I keep the old ones. Um, so that's my binder. Now, at this point, um, yeah, there's still stuff I need to update. I have all these notes to transfer into the binder, um, these printouts. 
um, but that's a slow process. I do it bit by bit. Um, I won't print out anything new or or keep anything new. I will just keep going. I might have some more scribbly notes from watching gardening videos, like these little little notes, little pieces of paper. I might have more of those, which I'll stick in here. But um, anything else like this or catalogs or anything, I won't do any more. I will get through this bit by bit as I have time. And that's why sometimes I'll say, um, I'm just going to take some time for administration. Well, this is what I consider administration. It's just, you know, just for myself, for inf information, so that I can do a better job at my garden. Um, so at this point, um, the next step will be to wait for the orders to arrive and check them in and then put them in the book and put them in the box in order, um, you know, at what point I have to start them. Plus, I will be starting some of these seeds. Um, we're what? The 7th? And on my calendar, what do I have? It says tw uh, February 24th is 12 weeks. So, I could probably wait till the first week of March. And then I'm going to have to start... Um, some of these seeds. I may do these begonia tubers earlier. I'm not sure. Um, but that's everything. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you all got something out of this. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my knowledge and through my experience so far. Um, remember, I'm not an expert. I didn't go to school for this. I started gardening, when was it? Probably about 2015, 2014. Um, it was a balcony garden, so I didn't have much. And I did do some flowers on ground level. The lady downstairs loved her flowers, so I did them for her. She was not a gardener. Um, so that's where I started. So I've got about 10 years of trial and error behind me, but I'm still no expert. I'm still learning all the time. So I will love to answer your questions if I can. If not, I can always Google it. I don't mind. I do that for myself constantly. Um, also, don't forget to like and comment or no, like, yeah, comment and subscribe. Would love to have you as a subscriber. Um, love to hear your comments. Um, yes, and remember, do what makes you happy and everything else will fall into place. All right, everybody, I will see you soon. Take care.